would have guessed that it would be snowing. Mind you, I suppose this is probably the lambing storm. The dogs are ready. I'm ready. Are you ready? Let us worship God today. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all forevermore. Amen. My name is the Reverend Robert Brooks and I am back here in this most beautiful church, Delaracy Church. Uh, I am the moderator, the inter-moderator to Davut and to Lickety, to Moy, to Matin and Delaracy and I am the minister, full-time minister to Codder and Croy and Del Cross Church. A very warm welcome to you on the Sunday that we call Low Sunday, the Sunday after, uh, after Easter. Many people today think that seeing is believing, but the opposite is true, believing is seeing. Believing something opens to us the possibility of experiencing it, of seeing it come to pass, and of having that which we believe produced in us many kinds of blessings. What will it take for us to believe? What proof are we looking for when we are ready to believe? Jesus is ready with tasks for us and to give us the Holy Spirit. Jesus' abundant grace, as shown by his acceptance of Thomas doubting, wanting nothing more than to move every person and all of society towards faith. Of course, today is also known as Thomas or Doubting Thomas Sunday. As we are called into worship today, it is sobering to remember that when God appeared on earth in the person of Jesus, most of the world did not recognise him and therefore did not worship him. Today we ask for the faith that will open our eyes to see Jesus for who he is, that we might worship him in truth. People of God, Behold and see your God. We open our eyes to see his glory. We open our ears to hear his wisdom. We open our hands to offer him gifts. We open our mouths to sing, to sing his praise. We open our hearts to offer him our love. For he is Lord. Let us have a period of silence as we begin our worship this Sunday. May we reflect on what God is saying to each and every one of us. So please take a moment to ask God to surround you and to be with you. Also let us remember those who are struggling with their faith and for all who mourn. Please join me in a period of silence. And our hymn which will break the silence is, I know that my Redeemer lives. Now, let's take a moment. May God descend upon you through the Holy Spirit.
come before God in prayer. Let us pray. Dear Lord, the celebrations are over. The joy of the, for he is risen, has gone. The crowds are at home and people are getting back to what was. How easy it is to forget the happiness of our faith, the festive holiday and all the cheer of having something to rejoice about, which we did last week. Today we come to worship on Low Sunday, a day which normally is seen as a period where people are feeling rather flat after the fun and the joy of Easter. Today is a new day, one which the Lord has made, which is equally as important to any other, yet this week seems to be different. Why? Why, Lord, is it that we are like this when we should each moment of the day rejoice in faith, be happy in the Lord and put our trust in him where he is central? Why is it that we seem to lack faith and hope and trust instead of saying my lord you are with me and i continue to rejoice in you for you have risen you have risen indeed hallelujah help those who are struggling with their faith and are in need of prayer help us all to open our eyes to a new beginning and to tear down the barriers of our fears so that the door of our hearts can be widely opened and we can welcome in, welcome you in. Lord God, we thank you for this new day. Help us to open the windows of our homes, the windows of our churches and the light and our lives. And allow the Holy Spirit, your Spirit of God, to come in. Make us holy people where one day you will say, you are good and you are faithful servants. You warmly welcomed me and I was center, I was central at all times of your lives. Forgive our worldly ways and help us to look towards your kingdom come through the love and the actions of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. As you know, I am a great fan of the Friendship Book and I have found this lovely little story uh, by Hannah Whit Whittall Smith. Uh, it comes from her book, In the God of All Comforts. She tells of a family who move to a town where they know no one. After his first afternoon of play, their son tells his mother he has met a little girl and she's so nice he never wanted to move house again. The mother asks what was the girl's name and he replied, Jesus. Surely not, the mother says. Well, she was so lovely. I did not know what else she could be called but Jesus. May we never, may we never be too old to learn from little children. What was the girl's name? Jesus. Because she was just so lovely. What a lovely story to tell. Amen. The Apostle Thomas, which we shall hear about in a moment, had the privilege to travel and to know Jesus and he learned from him for three years. Church tradition holds that after Jesus' resurrection, Jesus, after, sorry, after Jesus resurrection and ascended to heaven, Thomas carried the gospel message to the east and was eventually martyred for his faith. Because of Thomas, we have these inspiring words from Jesus. Thomas, because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Thomas' lack of faith has served to encourage all future Christians who have not seen Jesus and yet have believed in him and his resurrection. Our reading comes from the Gospel of John. Let us hear these inspiring words from the Gospel of John. Now Thomas, also known as Didmus, one of the twelve, was not with the disciples when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, we have seen 
we have seen the Lord. But he said to them, unless I see the nail marks in his hands and put my finger where the nails were and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were in the house again, and, and Thomas was with them. Though the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace, peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here. See, see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it into my side. Stop doubting and believe. Thomas said to him, my Lord and my God. And then Jesus told him, because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Jesus performed many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not recorded in this book. But these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Rejoice, the Lord is King. Let us hear this most beautiful hymn. Rejoice, the Lord is King. What a grand hymn that is. One Easter Sunday morning, a minister looked out at his congregation and noticed many people who had not been there for a long time were attending. Before he began his sermon, he said, Since this will probably be the last time I see many of you for a while, let me be the first to wish you a very, very Christmas. Oh dear me, you don't know how true that can really, really be. I <laughs> don't know why I'm laughing. Why am I laughing? <laughs> anyway, as we know, Easter is one of the, the times when people rush to church to worship God and then not to be seen until Christmas Eve 
sadly. This Sunday has got two names, as which I told you, one being Low Sunday, but the usual, usually the number of attendees is much smaller than the, the previous week, uh, Easter Sunday, and it can be called Doubting Thomas Sunday. We heard the story of Thomas a moment ago. Who would have thought, if you were in the room listening to the conversation between Jesus and Thomas, that today, in the year of 2021, we would be talking about Thomas and how he would not believe until he could see the wounds in Jesus' body. This is fair enough, because many today would act the same way. They need to see to believe. And Thomas, I believe, is no different. Well, we are no different to Thomas. Through his actions, what encouragement we can receive from him. Well, I'm sure not one of us at some time or other have not had our doubts. And that many who do not believe are unable to get over the barrier of doubts. There was an article in the Times magazine which shocked many. It stated Mother Teresa's crisis of faith. It focuses on a startling revelation in Mother Teresa's letters. Despite lifelong labours for God, she had struggled for years with the sense that he had abandoned her. She spoke of silence, of emptiness, of loneliness. I should add, she was not saying that she had stopped believing in God. In fact, her feelings that Mother Teresa continued, she, despite her feelings, she still did pray. She addressed her prayers to God. She believed that God was still there, even though she felt he was a, distant, a distance away. Maybe some of you feel like this today. The truth of the matter is that Mother Teresa stands in good company among saints with similar struggles. And even with Jesus himself, who cried out from the cross, My God, my God. Why? Why have you forsaken me? That cry may well help us understand Mother Teresa's enduring torment. In September 2014, the Most Reverend Justin Welby, the Archbishop of Canterbury, said that at times he questioned if God was really there. He said that, was he? Was God really there with him? The International Business Times called it the doubt of the century. Archbishop Welby's admission had not just raised a few eyebrows, it declared but sparked concerns if the leader of the Church of England would one day renounce Christianity or spirituality as a whole. Another journalist wrote excitedly, atheism is on the rise. And it appears as though even those at the top of the church are beginning to have their doubts. Despite the alarm, the Archbishop remarks were rather tame. He took an audience at Bristol Cathedral. He told them that there were moments where he wondered, is there, is there a God? Where is God? Then he was asked specifically if he harboured doubts. His response it is a really good question. The other day I was praying over something I was trying to organise and I ended up saying to God, look, look, this is all very well, but isn't it about time you did something? If you're here, do something to help me. I think many of us who are in the driving seat as a leader of whatever, can begin to get frustrated and begin to wonder why God is putting us through the rear. While some keep putting barriers up, we so clearly believe he has given us a vision. I wonder if Jesus ever felt like this as he taught the disciples. At times he says, you do not understand, do you? You don't get it. And they didn't until... It was far too late. The crucifixion had taken place and the resurrection was occurring. 
The Australian atheist columnist Peter Fitzsimons tweeted, Victory! After hearing Justin Welby's confession, at times we can wonder where God is and why has he placed us in a position which seems to be pointless where nobody is listening. We do have to believe that God is working and using us, using us for his glory and kingdom, for his will shall be done. Archbishop Welby's conjure only makes him human. He may lead 80 million Anglicans worldwide, but he is also a man who knows anguish. He knows rage, incomprehension, and the cold bareness of grief. He lost his firstborn child, Joanna, a seven-month-old baby girl, in a car accident in 1983, a period he is described as utter agony. As a teenager, he, he cared for an alcoholic father. When explaining his thoughts on doubt, he referred to the mournful Psalm 88, which describes the despair of a man who has lost all of his friends and then cries out, Why? Why, Lord, do you reject me? And hide your face from me. The psalm really, the psalm reads bleakly, darkness is my closest, my closest friend. When you are stuck in darkness, it can be suffocating. And faith cannot block it out, yet the darkness we may be feeling will disappear one day and light shall be upon us. It already is surrounding us now, although it is hard to see. It, it, see it in times of when we are in despair. So many people have or do feel like this today. I know. Yet through faith, we can believe that the dark days will vanish. And so it won't be, it won't seem that we're walking on our own. And that through, and that at times I know we do feel so lonely. But there will come a time when we'll believe and feel God there with us. Because the darkness will have disappeared and his light shall be surrounding us and we will recognise it. The disciples felt distraught. They lived in darkness after the crucifixion. Then the light reappeared. It was Jesus. He had appeared. He had returned to his disciples who were scared. Who were scared and locked themselves in a house away from the authorities. Faith cannot block out darkness or doubt. When on the cross, Jesus did not cry out, Here, here I come, but my God, why have you forsaken me? His disciples brimmed with doubt and misgivings. For Thomas, the one who doubted, he was the one who said to the disciples, Go, <coughs> go with Jesus, no matter what the danger. This was after Jesus had returned to Judea, and his life was very much at risk. And it was Thomas who was honest with Jesus and the disciples, for he admitted, Lord, Lord, we don't know where you are going. So how can we know the way? One of the most memorizing verses in all the Bible, Jesus answers, and you know it, I know you know it so well. I am the, the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me, he says. Like the other disciples, Thomas was no different, for he deserted Jesus during the crucifixion. Despite listening <coughs> to his teachings and seeing all his miracles, and as we well know, at the resurrection, Thomas then demanded. He needed proof. He wanted physical proof that Jesus had risen from the dead. I think we may have done the same. I'm sure many of us would be saying, yes, I think I would be the same as Thomas. His faith, Thomas's faith, was based solely on what he could touch and see for himself. 
All the disciples except John deserted Jesus at the cross. They misunderstood and doubted Jesus. But Thomas is singly, singled out in this gospel. In the gospels because he put his doubt in two words. Jesus did not rebuke him for he loved him. He showed unconditional love, which it, he so, well, of course, freely gives to each and every one of us. For Jesus knew Thomas was having a human struggle, human being, human being the ultimate word. <coughs> in fact, Jesus invited Thomas to touch his wounds and see for himself. Jesus does understand our battles with doubt with depression, with stress and feelings of helplessness. For he invites us to come near and to believe. Something many people cannot seem to, to do. God provides the Bible with eyewitness accounts of Jesus, life, the crucifixion and the resurrection to strengthen our, our faith. Today speaking with people we can hear personal testimonies of God in action. Yet people who seem to lack in faith dismiss because their minds are on worldly and not on the spiritual. You know they will never understand until they take that leap, that leap of faith. And as a minister friend said to me not that long ago, and get rid of their personal egos and this which stops them from being Christ-centred. If we are honest with ourselves, then we will admit that there are times when we possess doubt, as Thomas did. I know, I, I have. Let us remember when Jesus came to Thomas and told him to put his fingers in, in the holes due to the crucifixion, crucifixion stars. <coughs> Thomas, he began to believe. In much the same way. God uses our faith to help others, to develop the eyes of faith so that they too may begin to believe without having to rely on sight. They see us having peace that passes all understanding in spite of the trials of everyday life. It is then that our faith becomes a living testimony of trusting and believing in the resurrection. The resurrected Christ so that unbelievers might want to have the faith that also gives us hope in knowing that Christ holds our future just as much as he helps us, as much as he helps us in the present. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Dear God, at times we doubt you. Yet, how come we get into a car and put our faith in the driver? Board a plane and never ask questions about the pilot's experience. Eat a meal and never wonder, has the chef put poison in this food? Accept a vaccine and assume this will keep us safe and alive. We put our trust in so many people from carers to doctors bus drivers, shopkeepers, the postman, those who fix it, our electrical faults, the swimming instructor, so many more. We seem to trust so many people, yet when it comes to you, folks seem to build a wall between you and them, due to their doubts and lack of ability to trust you. Lord, help those who find it hard to believe. Show them the way and guide them out of the dark hour they find themselves in, into the light, the light of Christ. Lord, we pray for families who are arguing and the gulf is so large there, there does not seem to be a way back for them. Love has died and now their only hope is to look past what they once had for life. Long partners who are, who are turning to divorce business partners who cannot work together, children having to leave their families due to abuse, people at this moment in time wondering, shall I go? Where 
will I find safety? How can I leave this abusive security? Lord, we pray for all who once trusted and now doubt and feel let down by the actions and the words of others. For those who do not wish to, to move on, yet know it is time to go. For people who live on their own and have decided it's time to live with 24-hour care assistance. For the chapter of our lives is closed and there is a new chapter waiting to be written. New beginnings are on the horizon. Lord, we pray for people who are stuck in a rut and cannot see beyond what they have. Help each of us to move forward. Take us out of our comfort zones into the light of a new day and break down the human ego which stops you from becoming centre, central to our lives. As the world evolves, help us to change, to listen and to see and be prepared to get our hands dirty. For faith does not, does not stand still. Jesus did not stay in one place. He moved about teaching and healing, loving. For his world did not consist of one wee corner. In Jesus we learn that life does not remain the same. And today as we hear of the Apostle Thomas... We thank you. We thank you for his words, for his love of Jesus and how he managed to move towards a great faith where he became an ambassador of our Lord Jesus Christ who gave his life as Jesus did for the Christian belief. Help each of us to move from where we are at to be fully in, to be fully in Christ. May our May our half-hearted faith become one which is for Christ alone. May our faith be truly and utterly in Jesus. Help each and every one of us to see more clearly and to remember yesterday is gone and what is important is today and what the future holds for us tomorrow. Lord Jesus, bless each step we take and guide us in your love. As we meet new brothers and sisters along the road we go, may they be like the young boy who told his mother, well, she was so lovely, I did not know what else she could be called but Jesus. May the God of deliverance guide each of us through our doubts, breaking down our egos, our human egos, so we are fully in Christ, who said, and we say together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
Spirit, we now go forth into the world to fulfill our calling as the people of God, the body of Christ. My friends, go in peace. And may God grant to the living grace, to the departed rest, to the church, the Queen and the Commonwealth, and all of humankind, peace and concord. And to us and all his servants, life everlasting and the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you forevermore. Amen. Well, as you can see, we have come outside and the sun is shining. If only you knew how many times we have been outside hoping to film part of this service and then it started to snow. But hey-ho, we, we are here. Shall we have a, a few jokes from, of course, we need to have the Vicar of Dibley time. Where do Egyptians go when people keep doubting them? Into denial. Think about it. I've started doubting myself a lot less recently. Well, at least I think, I think I have. My doubting wife, my wife has absolutely no confidence in my ability to repair electrical items around the house. Well, she's in for one big shock, I know. What do you call a room of full of cynical plumbers? A sceptic tank. Uh, I know. It, <laughs> one other. What did the sceptic, what did the sceptical marine biologist say before her first day of work? I think I'm just going to test the waters. Oh lordy, I know. My friends, it's great to be back here at the Laris St. Church. It's wonderful to have you joining me this Sunday, the 11th of April. Blessings to you. I look forward to seeing you next week. Uh, and then next week will be our last time filming, whereupon on the week after we will be live streaming from Codder Church. So next week, my friends, I wonder, where? Where? Where do you think that I will be and Julia, who is filming, where do you think we're going to go? Well, you're going to have to watch to find out. Have a wonderful week. Keep safe, keep happy and rejoice in the Lord for he is with you. God bless and thank you. And I send you a big wave. It is with great sadness that uh, we learn today that the Duke of Edinburgh has, has died. Our thoughts are very much with Her Majesty the Queen and her family and the life that the Duke led. He was a, a remarkable man, uh, somebody who, well, he very much loved his wife, he loved his country and he worked uh, very hard for the monarchy and I'm sure we're all very grateful for what he has given to the United Kingdom. Please, would you join me in prayer? I have a candle lit beside me. Maybe you would like to light a candle to light one in his memory, but please join me in prayer. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the life of, of the Duke of Edinburgh, Prince Philip. He is, was a remarkable gentleman who was loved very much especially by his family and by the nation, the United Kingdom of Britain. We just thank you, Lord, for all that he has done for the world, for the UK, for helping people in need. He has left many memories, ones which we will smile about uh, and others we will just look on in awe. But Heavenly Father, at the end of the day, while he was the, the Duke of Edinburgh, while he was very much part of our royal family, he was human. He was a husband. He was a father, a grandfather and a great grandfather and to many a dear friend. And so we pray for those who mourn.
we pray for Her Majesty the Queen and for her children, for Prince Charles, Princess Anne, Prince Andrew and Prince Edward, along with their children and grandchildren. May you surround all those who mourn and may you gather us all in. We thank you for the blessing of the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ and the remembrance that one day we shall be all reunited together. So Heavenly Father, in silence, may you surround all who feel the pains of death and may you gather us all in. In Jesus' name. Amen.